When I was growing up in Laguna, the tide pools were my playground. After school, I'd take long walks on the beach. I'd go down to the tide pools and look for shells. Sometimes I'd find the big abalone shells, even 10 to 12 inches across. And uh, the animals were real plentiful at that time, the cowries, the sea urchins, sea anemones. And I thought they were always going to be there like that. But what I've noticed in the years since that time is there's been a tremendous decrease in the number of animals in the tide pools and a corresponding increase in the number of people that have been impacting the tide pools. Okay, it's time to go down to the tide pool. Oh, boy! If you go down to the ocean, ocean? down by some rocky shore, Rock out! when the tide goes out, you'll be dancing dance. like you never, never danced before. Don't pinch at the rhythm. Sea star. Sea star. Rock on hollow feet. Anemones. Are waving their tentacles. Sculpins. Are looking for something to eat. Fish. To do the tide pool boogie. Woogie, woogie, woogie. Listen to that ocean beat. Snap the beat. Do the tide pool boogie. Woogie, woogie, woogie. It's a Tide pools a rich, complex ecosystem teeming with life. This area, where the land and the sea meet, can be found at rocky coastlines throughout the world. Due to the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon on the Earth, in California, there are two high tides and two low tides each day. It is during these low tides that a miniature world filled with an enormous amount of life is uncovered. Life in the tide pool is a constant struggle against crashing waves, the hot sun, and the ever-changing weather. Competing for limited space and against each other, tide pool life relentlessly marches forward to the rhythm of the ocean. Ultimately, all the species that live in the tide pools depend on one another primarily as predator and prey. So if one animal disappears from this fragile ecosystem, other animals are likely to be affected. As if this daily grind against nature wasn't enough stress for the tide pool animals, recently, another more serious problem has arisen. As more and more people move near the coast, the animals must now struggle to protect themselves against the activities of a growing human population. Scientists and researchers around the state have shown that some of the major problems include storm drain runoff, sewage discharge, air pollution, and oil spills which flow into coastal waters. And although these problems are having a serious impact on tide pool ecosystems, Recent attention has been given to the effects of human visitation and their increasing demand for seaside recreation. There are a number of ways that the tide pools are impacted that people don't realize. Uh, trampling, collecting shells, even collecting animals. And the overharvesting can have uh, tremendously devastating results for the whole community. There is a problem with collecting, and I think that people come down here and they feel um, oftentimes that they can take things right out of the refuge um, to their homes for souvenirs or for food. And that might be okay in a time when there are fewer people that inhabit our area, but. With so many people sharing this resource, each one taking a shell or an animal. Hey, look, I'm holding a scarf and stuff. Um, what we're finding is that the animals in the refuges are, are becoming depleted. Hey, what are you doing? A tide pool rule is you can't take, like, if you think a shell is really pretty, it might be a home of a hermit crab. And 
so you shouldn't take anything. Like, you shouldn't take, like, stuff that's, like, really pretty. Even though you really want to take it, you can't take it. Um, you're not allowed to take any animals or shells from the beach because if you do, if you were to take shells, for instance, that would be another animal's home and they need their special habitat to live here. Collecting tide pool animals isn't the only problem. Almost everyone wants to get a closer look, but when animals are picked up and not put back in the same place, they often die. Many species like sea anemones and sea hares, who don't move very quickly, may be poked and prodded, which might actually kill them. When rocks are overturned and not replaced, the animals who live either attached or underneath the rocks are left to dry out in the sun. One of the rules of the tide pools is you can't poke the sea anemones because they'll suck your finger in. You shouldn't pick up the sea slugs because when you, if you squeeze them too hard, they'll squirt out purple stuff at you, and it's like their protection to warn you to stay away from them and put them down. And one rule is like not to throw trash because I don't think you like to swing, swim on the, with trash, in it, and that's the same with animals. We can't run on the rock so we don't smush the tide pool animals. Please notify the tide pool manager if your class is going on a field trip. We are actually loving them today. Each year, hundreds and thousands of kids visit the tide pools in California beaches. So leave everything here except for your trash. Keep our beaches clean! As teachers become more aware of this magical ecosystem, there has been a measurable interest in guided field trips. In Humboldt County, where the population is rather low, school groups travel from as far as 300 miles away to view this living library. In other parts of the state, most notably in Southern California, springtime brings a flurry of activity to the tide pools. Now, one of the more important animals that lives in these tide pools is the California mussel. In order to provide students with a quality experience, the city of Newport Beach in Southern California has limited the number of people allowed each day on scheduled field trips. What was happening was the location was being loved to death. It was one of those areas where the tide pools were really beautiful, they were fairly pristine, uh, and uh, we got the word out to the school groups of what was there, and as a result, we kind of oversold the place, and we were having as many as 2,000 kids a day. The problem that we have is a lot of groups come down on their own. It's still a public beach. You don't have to make an appointment with the city for a tour. But the thing that's good about making a tour is that we sit down, we talk to the kids, we explain to them not to be walking in the water, stay up on the large rocks, and how to look for animals not to step on them. The groups that come down on their own don't always get that education before they get here. And uh, they tend to be all over the place. And we have a tough time. Too many students exploring at one time may limit the opportunity of observing these animals in their habitat. With so many feet clambering over the rocks, animals that live in the splash and high tide zones, such as seaweed, barnacles, mussels, and snails like chitons and limpets, get trampled upon. Survival is especially rough during low tides when exposed animals like sea anemones, gumboot chitons, and sea stars seek refuge under loose rocks and seaweed. Oftentimes people will pick up an animal um, and rush it over to one of their friends so that they can show them what they saw. And oftentimes after they've done that, they'll set it right down onto the ground right there. And that presents quite a problem for those animals. So it's really important to leave things where they are point them out to your friends, and then call one of us, because we're all experts. We'll come over and say, hey, that's a mussel. Tide pools are important for the ecology of the ocean. They serve as meeting places for offshore animals such as sea otters and seals, birds, and even fish, 
who use the tide pools to search for food, to breed, or to hide. The removal of one organism greatly affects the survival of another. Some animals, like sea snails, are grazers who feed on algae. Others, like sea anemones and sea stars, are carnivores or meat eaters who like to eat other organisms. Scavengers, like the California spiny lobster or the hermit crab, will eat anything that's dead or rotting. The food chain doesn't stop in the tide pool. Many animals who live in deeper water also depend on the tide pool critters for their meals. As the interest in the intertidal ecosystem grows, creative education programs are springing up throughout the state. Educators use everything from science to humor to get the message across. They teach about defense mechanisms, feeding strategies, of conservation issues, and of the overall protection of this delicate yet vibrant ecosystem that is such an invaluable treasure to the people of California. School groups that arrive at our refuge that are prepared have a lesser impact than school groups obviously that don't because those groups understand that there are behavioral expectations and they know they're not supposed to turn over rocks and they know they're not supposed to leave trash. They know all the rules about not collecting and more than anything they understand that they're respecting another habitat. So we're finding that, that the trick to preserving tide pools um, for students is that they spend the time to prepare prior to their field trip. My tide pool animal is a clam. A clam has a soft body inside of its hard shell. My favorite animal is a California sheep pen because um, when it's born, it's a female, and when it's 30 centimeters long or 20 inches, it, it becomes into a male. My animal is a sea star. A sea star has many different colors and it can regenerate an arm if it loses one. My animal's an oyster and the, the, they could be a boy or girl depending on the temperature of the water. As you can see, most of these kids here are staying up on the, on the dry rocks. They're taught not to walk on mussels, not to walk in the pools, not to pull anything off the rocks. And um, even though they might be doing a little bit of damage by tromping around, they're doing a lot less than they would without knowing those things. I just wanted to say to observe the tide pools because they're so beautiful, but don't touch them because you can harm the habitats. And um, the tide pools are important to our state, and so like we should keep them safe by not throwing trash and taking the animals home. Um, when you're in the tide pools, don't take anything um, from them because it's their habitat and. It's just like somebody's taking your home away from you. I think it's important to keep the water clean because we don't want trash getting out there and, uh, and like plastic and stuff, the animals get all wrapped up in it. And it's important you don't want to be swimming around in a bunch of trash. So the tide pools represent the interface between land and sea, and so people can actually walk there to go experience it. Therefore, it's a really important window to the ocean for most people. Um, most people will never experience the deep sea. They will never go diving in the kelp forest. But just about anybody can walk down to the tide pools and see sea life firsthand. And so if we continue to degrade our tide pools, that experience, that firsthand experience of the ocean will be missing for future generations. So in terms of caring for our tide pools, there's a couple messages that we want to get across. First of all, we want people to come out here and enjoy the tide pools. And, but we want people to do that without causing any harm to this environment. And so really one of the main messages is please try not to disturb the animals and plants that live here. If you step carefully and you stand quietly and look closely, observe like a scientist, you'll probably see a lot more and learn a lot more about the animals and plants that live here. So the message that I think we're trying to communicate is that when you go to the marine life refuges, 
don't take anything home with you, that it's a zone of no collecting, that you should leave everything the way that you found it, and that really, if you're going to take anything, I guess, from the refuges, it should be the educational lessons, and it's the lesson of preserve and protect it for the next generation. So remember, when you're visiting the tide pools with your class, family, or friends, to always follow good tide pooler rules. Never remove animals, shells, or rocks from the tide pools. Never pick up animals. Observe them where they are. Walk gently, taking care not to step on plants or animals. Never turn over rocks. If you go down to the ocean, down by some rocky shore, when the tide goes out, you'll be dancing like you never, never danced before. Grab a pitch at the rhythm, see stars walk on hollow feet, see an enemy's a waving the tentacle, well, sculpins are looking for something to eat. Do the tide pull, boogie, 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 boogie. listen to that ocean beat. Do the tide pull.